If you've done any work with Python, one of the really cool features that they have is the ability to take slices of an array quickly and easily. C Sharp 8 has added something similar. Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to take a quick look at one of the new features in C Sharp 8. I don't know. C Sharp 8 still new enough to be called new? I think so. Yeah. So I think that most people probably aren't using it yet. So. Yeah, it's the default C Sharp dialect uh, for .NET 3 and up. So if you create a new project now, you're going to be using C Sharp 8. Uh, but I guess my, my metric is, is it newer than the New Testament? Yes, then it's new. <laughs> That's the oldest thing I can think of that is called new. Anyway, so we have here uh, a collection of integers, excitingly enough, between one and seven. Uh, and we wanted to start taking some bits of this. So this has always been possible through a little bit of link stuff. Like you can always do like stuff dot first to give you the first thing, at least if you include the namespaces. Uh, you can do uh, stuff.last to give you the last one. Uh, and I have found in the past that this is usually sufficient, but then I end up in these situations where I'm like, ah, oh, I want the second to last element. Uh, and I have seriously considered going and writing this extension method. Um, and I think there are actually libraries out there that provide like second to last, third to last sort of <laughs> yes, thing. Yes, I've seen these. Um, but usually I end up doing things like, uh, oh, you know, I want like last, but then I'm going to take like, uh, you know, two from the end and I can do these subsets of arrays and things like that. Uh, so it, does, it doesn't come up too frequently in the work that I do, but if you are parsing like CSV files or collections or arrays or things like that, um, then this stuff can come up fairly frequently. But let's take a look at some of the stuff that we can do with the range operator. Uh, so this is uh, something that is both part of the language now and you can do manually. We're just going to use the, the language shortcuts because they're much easier to understand, I think. So if I wanted to take just the first two elements of this array, uh, then what I could do is I could do, um, and I'll just steal a little bit over here, console.writeLine. Uh, and I'll do string dot join. Yeah, just so we can see this stuff printed out easily. Uh, and then I'm going to take stuff. And in here, I'm going to select a subset of this. So I'm going to take like element zero through one. Uh, unfortunately, the autocomplete on this is a little bit funny. So this little bit in here is the range operator taking elements zero through one of the array. So if we go and run that, and run, uh, so is that an entirely new array now that this has those first two elements? Yes, it is. Well, in case it only has the first one element here, so the ending index isn't inclusive. So Great. run, yeah. There we go. Elements one and two. From cool. the array. So yes, it is an entirely mm. new array. And I'll, I'll get to a fun trick with that in a little bit that I saw on Twitter earlier this week. Uh, so this is nice. This lets me choose subsections of the array. So I could take like elements two through five of the array, and that would give me stuff in the middle of the array. Uh, but oftentimes, we don't know kind of how long an array is. Uh, so you end up writing this code like, OK, I want to take like three from the end. So you do like array.count and then subtract three from that to, to just get a few from the end. Uh, so you can change that around now. And we can use this syntax here. Uh, so this little hat thingy here is going to take the count from the end of the array and go kind of work its way backwards down the array. So you can think of the, the array being indexed this way. It's now also indexed this way. Uh, so that one there just truncated kind of the last element of the array. So that lets us take 
just a, a subsection from within the array. Uh, if we wanted to drop off the beginning or the ending characters here too, we can do that as well. So this is going to take from the beginning of the array through to the second to last element of the array. So one through six there, uh, and then at the, the end here, I can take elements like everything from two up until the end of the array. That's very cool. This actually just came up for me last week in a project where I needed to do like uh, generate all the permutations of values in an array kind of scenario. Hmm. Um, I, I ended up, this was in full framework, so I didn't have the, the C sharp eight like in a legacy app. I was using an object called array segment. Oh, which lets yes. you do kind of a similar concept, but it's like a an object that sits on top of the array and makes it look like a segment of the array. Yeah, so that that's a really cool thing. We should talk about that too. Um, I use that other than when you mentioned it. So what do you do with that? It's just like a array segment. Yeah, you do a new array segment. Actually, I should check because I can't remember how you initialize it. Array segment. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, I just... think you give it the array. And then the range of index values that you want. It's pretty uh, difficult to use this when I have the font so big. <laughs> yeah, that's not scaling properly. Yeah, all right. So bug report on that. Okay, I'll just guess. Uh, so stop, and then what, like zero through four? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, is that in some namespace that I don't have? It is in system, so you should have it. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Requires That's all. Argument. Array. Oh, he might need to give it a the int type argument, which is a little oh, strange. Like <clears throat> that it doesn't infer that. But... Ah, okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Right. So then, if we put B down here, let's print this out. Let's see what we get. Yeah. I think it might be, yeah, that might be right. OK, yeah, so that returns elements of 0 through 4 of the array. But then this is the interesting one, right? Because then I can do like star 1 uh, is equal to 450, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and then even though I'm referencing the original array here, <clears throat> it's going to get reflected in B, right? Because this is just a view on top of that array. That's right, yeah. yeah. So. It makes it very memory efficient if that's what you want, right? Yeah. If you didn't want, if you didn't actually need copies of the array, um, just depends what you're doing. Right. So then the difference here would be if we did like um, uh, oh, killing me. We'll see the difference here. Then. So the first one is going to give us a copy of the array, and then the second one will give us a view on top of the array. So you can see the difference there. Neat. Um, so one of the, the cool little shorthands that somebody was mentioning on Twitter for this stuff is that if you need to quickly copy an array, that will do it. Because uh, it's going to take. Cool all the elements of the array. So that makes A like a complete copy of the original array, which is a lot quicker than doing like array.copy, or at least yeah. cleaner, I think, than doing array.copy. It's probably still the same mechanism under the covers. Neat. Yeah. So it's just another one of those fun sort of syntactical things that you get in C Sharp 8. I don't think we've done any series on C Sharp 8 features. So maybe I don't think so. we'll expand on that. Uh, definitely a few fun ones in there, especially nullable reference types. All right. Well, I think that's all I had on this quick subject. Um, so thank you all for showing up. Remember to like, comment, and share. Uh, even if you just share, a, do a subset of those things, we'll be happy. See you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.